Some arrived in America by setting foot first on her native soil after long journeys of sacrifice and hardship. I came to America on the fifth day of July to young expectant parents in a small town called Alney in southeastern Illinois. Born 20 minutes after midnight on that date due to the annual Independence Day celebration at the fairgrounds, delaying my mother's doctor's arrival. Ali is still a very special town known for friendly working people, American values, surrounded by a large number of white squirrels which roam the landscape fully protected by the townsfolk. Even as a fourth grader there, I learned to proudly salute the flag with my classmates as it passed by in parades along the city's main street. I personally experienced Alney's love of country, love of values and ideals in many other places where our family lived, including California, Arkansas, Missouri, and Florida. I am truly proud to be a son of this great nation. I value the freedom and liberty which have been made possible by the sacrifices and commitments of our founders and fellow citizens. During this present time, as various voices apologize for the greatness of this country, this beacon of the world's hope, I'd like to challenge you and all Americans, let us proudly proclaim America's achievements at home and abroad. Ours is a great and compassionate nation, the light of the world. We need a reaffirmation of American greatness. Through emphasizing the Constitution in which we believe, through remembering the freedoms in which we share, and through the vision that we have chosen to pursue, I am most grateful for and proud of the Constitution in which we believe. Some 55 individuals were involved in framing this great document at that first Constitutional Convention. You add to them an additional 90 as part of the first Federal Congress that framed the Bill of Rights, and all these participants worked together, laid aside their personal preferences and points of view, yet remained bound and linked together in one common purpose. The founding of a nation which remains to this day the envy of the world. Young Thomas Jefferson summarized the whole event when he said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men and women deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. And whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. I remain a son of this great land. You also are citizens of this great nation. We're still the children of our founders. Speaking on an economic bill of rights, President Reagan spoke eloquently when in 1987 he reminded us that this republic was a revolutionary idea, a representative government and individual rights, as well as the cause of independence, to which the Declaration signers pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Each generation since them has done the same. Let no one charge that ours is a blind nationalism. We as a country do not hide our shortcomings, and there are some. But there are few people on this planet who have more reason to hold their heads high than do the citizens of the United States of America. I have never been ashamed of this country, and I never will. Freedom is not created by government. Where does it come from? nor is it a gift from those in political power. It is, in fact, secured by limitations that are placed on those in government. Freedom is the absence of a government censor looking at our newspapers, our media outlets, and our universities. It is the lack of fear by those who gather in religious services to 
worship or those who run their company to make the nation's product. It is the absence of official abuse of those who speak up against the policies of their government. I must ask, as did other years ago, where did these people come from? Where did we find such people? Well, they came from not the rank of ranks of the elected politicians. The experience our founders brought to their task came from work on the farms, work in the fields, work in the offices, work in the villages, defending their right to liberty and the values which have served to lead the world. They came from the working people, many of them, of this great land. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. Just working Americans, busy with their jobs, unable to position themselves daily in Washington, D.C., outside the doors of Congress and the White House, to represent their interest as paid lobbyists with endless streams of dollars targeted often on behalf of large special interests. At a time today when many in Washington, D.C. listen only to lobbyists and special interests, at a moment when many touting elective and political experience spend us deeper into a chasm of tax and spend, leaving our grandchildren and future generations with massive debt, government inefficiency, and incompetence, it's time for us all to revisit our founders' thoughts. In the words of young Thomas Jefferson, he wanted just one amendment to the Constitution, and it read like this. I would be willing to depend on that alone for the reduction of the administration of our government to the genuine principles of its Constitution. I would like an additional article taking from the federal government the power of borrowing. So I am proud of our Constitution. I'm also proud of the freedoms we share. 